Today's video is a guest artist video. And I love bringing you these because you get to see how other artists work. Now previously we've had session fashion makeup artists, celebrity makeup artists that work with celebrities and musicians. But today's guest is an incredible and the incredible BAFTA and Oscar award winning film makeup artist, Vally O'Reilly. Vally's career spans many years. She's done so many incredible movies. She's worked with Tim Burton a lot. Most notably, I think, for makeup is uh, definitely Alice in Wonderland. I know that lots of people were recreating the look on YouTube, the Anne Hathaway look, and particularly the Helena Bonham Carter Queen of Hearts makeup look, which is such an iconic look now. She also did films like The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston and The Lemony Snicket, a series of unfortunate events movie, which is one that I absolutely love. And so many more, just way too many to mention. So I'm going to link to her webpage and you can see all of the films that she's worked on. I first got to know Valley a couple of years ago when I was researching my book. And I was at the stage when I was researching my makeup muses and one of them was Amy Winehouse. And I had some images that I wanted to use in the book. And I found out that Valley had done Amy's makeup for these this particular series of, of looks. And we got chatting on the phone and I interviewed her just for ideas about how she'd worked with her and what she'd, her experience with her and how she'd done her makeup and the kind of products she'd used. And I found out that Valley worked with Amy a lot, you know, whenever she was in the US. And she had so many bits of information and tips about the makeup look that whenever I got requests after that for an Amy Winehouse inspired makeup, I'd always think, oh, I must ask Valley next time she's in the UK, because she lives in America, she must come in and recreate a look that she did on Amy. So without further ado, here's the incredible Valley O'Reilly. I'm really honored that Lisa, who's one of the biggest makeup icons, has invited me here to do an Amy Winehouse demonstration. I just want to make it clear that I didn't design the makeup for Amy Winehouse. Amy designed it. She, she researched and she, she was a big fan of the, the Vargas girls, of the Ronettes, of anything to do with circa 1950s. It was a amazing to be able to make her up and then sit and listen to that incredible voice. Today I'm going to demonstrate her look from a wearable liner to the full-on Amy look. Okay, so I've just prepped Kate's face. I use the Organic Pharmacy Rosehip Oil and it's really lovely. She has normal skin and this just soaks in perfectly to prep her skin for the makeup. I've used this foundation by IT Cosmetics. And there's SPF 50, and it also has some moisturizer in it. It's really good for people that have rosacea or any skin imperfections. So I'm starting by just sort of dabbing this color, taking it up and around. The great thing about this foundation is the coverage without looking like a heavy coverage. Sometimes it gets to the point where I don't even have to put a concealer under the eye. Okay, so sometimes I switch out brushes after I've used that one. I'll use like the Senna brush. It kind of has these little fine little hairs on it. In case there's little bits that kind of got stuck that were kind of heavy. So next, I sometimes take a little brush with the same foundation and I go under the eyes a bit and in the corners. Everybody has a tendency to be a little dark in the corners of their eyes and a little bit sometimes if you don't get sleep underneath here. This foundation's really good for camouflaging that. And if you don't want to get a brush like this, you can use one of these little baby beauty blenders and kind of go in and pat it in. After I put the foundation, I'm going to go over her whole face and cover up a lot of the imperfections that she has with some highlighting uh, pens from By Terry. The By Terry is really pretty good covering these little red spots. With this foundation, it's really good for covering red and melasma. So now I'm going to go in here and put some of this concealer and use it kind of like a highlight. I never really put eyeshadow on Amy, so we kind of just used kind of highlighter on the lids to make them, you know, pop a little bit. So I just finished using the By Terry highlight and I took it across the bone here because Kate has a little bit of a dip and it just sort of 
is a little bit one shade pinkier and brighter than the foundation because we're going for kind of a natural look because with with the Amy look it was mainly about her eyes and her lips and it wasn't to look like she had any foundation on at all. I'm using the Guerlain translucent powder. It smells like violets. Doesn't it smell amazing? Yes. Yeah, so I'm using that on Kate because the thing I like about this powder, I mean the translucent, not only does it have a beautiful scent, but it completely takes the, the shine off without being thick. It doesn't like layer. But I just do a light brush of it because most women over 40 will run away from you on a movie set if you come up to them with powder because they, most of the powders are so heavy that you know they feel like you're doing an, an aging makeup on them. I'm gonna do the blush now on Kate, basically just like a whisk of the blush. So I, I like to try to get it in the apples of the cheeks and drag it up to the hairline and then sort of take it around the face ever so slightly and drag it down the nose. I'm going to use a little bit of this Hourglass palette, which is really a great illuminating palette, on her lids just to add some light instead of using eyeshadow. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of the illuminating powder here and blend it out to the bone here just to open up the eyes a little bit. Then I'll drag a little bit of it down the nose, but where the ball of the nose is, I just go straight because I don't want it to be accentuated. Then I'm going to take some powder and just ever so slightly create a shadow on the end of the nose. Sometimes I tear a tissue in half like this, and I just go over the whole face. In the United States, they, in the bathrooms, they have seat covers, and those work incredible, the toilet seat covers to just take up any excess that's sit that seems to be lifting up to the skin. But tissue is fine. Okay, so now I think I'll move it. Her eyebrows are amazing. We all wish we had these kind of eyebrows. They're not cut and like, or those wiggly worms that everybody seems to do. Now I might not need to, to fill it too much. Sometimes you can like clip a couple of the little hairs but she doesn't really need too much. And there's one here there. Can I do that? Do you mind? So now I'm going to use this stuff that I brought from Los Angeles. It's by a company called Senna, and I love it. And this one has a color to it. It's, it has a dark brown, but so it kind of pumps the brows up a bit, but it's a brow gel, and it holds them in place. If you can't afford a brow gel and you, you know, you have really dark eyebrows, you can buy a glue stick. You can buy one that's non-toxic that children use. And you just take a little teeny bit. I'll improvise with this, with this rose balm that I've used on her lips by the organic pharmacy. And I put a teeny bit of the glue stick on your fingers, you know, like about this much. And it'll hold the eyebrows in place wherever you touch it and put it, and it doesn't show up because it's, it's clear. But it's a tip I learned from the drag queens in New York in the 80s, because they used it for waxing out their eyebrows. Okay, so next, let's see, should we do the famous Amy eyeline? Okay, let's give that a go now. So this is actually the eyeliner that Amy used. She brought it to me to use on her, and then I bought it, so I always had it when I did her makeup you know, for all the different events in Los Angeles. So the great thing about this eyeliner f that I liked, and the fact that it was a great helpful hint from her turning me on to this, is the brush is amazing. It's got a really tiny point that's got, it's got the perfect amount of firmness. So it's not too floppy, it's not too long, it's kind of a little stump, which I like. So it's easy for people that aren't makeup artists to get into the fine, like, you know, do a really skinny line if they want, or do, you know, a, an overdrawn line like this. So I'm pulling the eye up to help me hold it firm and also helps that, so Kate doesn't blink. Just to pop up the eyes a little more, I'm using this gauche 
it's not even for, I think it's for the brow, it's a brow kit, but it's because it's a brow kit, there's not a lot of heavy pigment in it, so I'm going to just drag it underneath her eyelashes. Look up, please. So I'm just going to do a light swipe. I often curl the eyelashes. Wow, hers are really long. I like the Shuamura Lash Curler. And I just, since hers are so long, I just give it a little hit with the eyelash curler. I'm doing the mascara now. It's doll eyes. I've already done one coat and I'm just going back over because Kate has the longest eyelashes next to Bambi. Just sort of hitting the tips. So sometimes the mascara bugs me when people have like, it looks like they have three eyelashes because they've clumped their mascara on so much. So when I do the mascara, sometimes if I, if I want to really make sure that it's combed out and I don't want to get bits all over the face, I'll do this, close your eyes, and I'll just put a tissue under and I'll comb it slightly through, like I can even press it right down. The bottom eyelashes, I'm going to use Clinique's bottom mascara. I'm using it in black and it's a teeny weeny little brush. So it's really easy so that, you know, people that, that aren't makeup artists can do their bottom lashes without, you know, because look at how small this brush is. Because you can get right in there without, you know, having a giant wand near your eyes. Amy liked to use the red, but for a lot of the photo shoots, you know, we did a nude as well, so that's why I'm going to give you both options. When I did Amy's lips, I used this by a company called Uni that used to be my company years ago. So I used, it was like a nude color called Air. You can't get it anymore, so I'm going to do it with that color, but I've got a replacement match. And I barely, I just swipe it. What I used for the lipstick is kind of peculiar. It is made by La Prairie. You can only get it in the U.S., but it's a lip enhancer. So it's basically a base kind of to put on to kind of base out the lips. But I like the color, the way it looked on Amy, so I decided to use it as the lipstick. So now that the lip is on, I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to do to kind of matte the lipstick. Okay, so this is a little tip. So you can hold this over like this and take powder just a slight dash of the powder and blot this across but I tear the tissue in half Amy had a piercing there so instead obviously I'm not going to pierce Kate's face but to give it a full the full look can you turn to me for a minute I'm just going to put in that spot a little using the Rimmel eyeliner a little beauty mark Amy was, you know, obviously Amy's look was the red lipstick, so she did bring me a Rimmel color diva, which is hard to get, so I'm going to substitute it with this Urban Decay color. Okay, now go like this. I always, actors always laugh because I always say to them, make your bottom hard, and they think I'm talking about their rear ends. But to get under here, on the lips, when you're doing someone else's makeup, you kind of have to, you know, have them pressed down like this. So this is just with the lip liner alone, but then sometimes we would put uh, Russian Red by MAC over it. Okay, so at the end, I'm going to do what I did before, but instead of, since this is already a matte lipstick, I'm not going to put powder, I'm just going to go like this, my fingers. So now we're going to do the authentic Amy Winehouse, which, you know, is obviously not an everyday makeup for people. If you go home on the subway like this, they're going to think you're Amy Winehouse reincarnated. This is the final look if you want to do the real exaggerated Amy Winehouse. And voila. In my opinion, I think Amy Winehouse was one of the most exciting female artists of this century. She was just uber talented and is missed by so many.